Good evening, everybody. I bring this uh, meeting to order for February the 21st, 2023. Result of the agenda for February the 21st, 2023. A regular meeting of council be adopted. Moved by Councilor White, seconded by Councilor Medwood. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Result of the minutes of the February 7th, 2023 regular council meeting and the February 9th, 2023 special meeting uh, be approved. Moved by Councillor Bobbick, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? Councillor Medwood. I couldn't find the minutes for the February 9th meeting, so should we be tabling that until the next one because it was not available for review? Yes, they, they did just go up this afternoon, actually. Okay. Because when I looked at, uh, I think it was about 5.30, I sent an email because they weren't on all net yet. So, <clears throat> motion to uh, table this resolution. It's moved by Councillor Medwood. Do I have a seconder? Actually, we cannot send, we cannot send our borrowing bylaw to the municipal board without these minutes being approved. <clears throat> okay. Are we, are we discussion? No. So I need a seconder to table. Council so White. Oh, well, we don't want a table. <clears throat> well, council does what council wishes. I couldn't get the meeting minutes up until this afternoon. Not that I couldn't, I didn't. <clears throat> so, uh, are you wanting to ask a question? Okay, ask the question. Uh, I'm gonna, I think it's a, I think it's appropriate that we get them on. Let's have a look at them. It takes a few minutes to have a look at the minutes. Have a look at the minutes, and then we've seen them, and then we can move on with the boring bylaw. Okay, so if, if council's okay with that, but do we have a seconder to, um, sure. tab to table it? Table. To sure. review it? No, just to table it. I have a motion right now to table it. But if we table it, we can't bring it forward to discuss it. That's correct. So I'm not tabling it. So if you go to your minutes, or, or the town website, uh, they should be on the town website. Or you can go into minutes and all, and all that. <clears throat> No, it's February 9th. They're not there yet. No, they're not there. No, I feel better. Uh, yeah. I just... Public access is on. So if you go into all net, <coughs> hit menu, minutes, mm -hmm. and you should be able to hit... Well, we got January 31st, February 7th, and that's it. That's all I have council all selected. Did you just send them to all of us again? Yeah, try and refresh. So then when you refresh, you probably will have to go back to the menu and go minutes. They're not there. They're still not there. <clears throat> February 7th and January 31st and older. says it's on the website and you have access. I don't know what else to do. <clears throat> so the minutes from the February the 9th and you can't seem to get them up here? You see them on there? I have them, yeah. I've got them. <clears throat> yeah, girl. I don't. I don't know where I went, but they showed up. I went to minutes, February 9th, special meeting. Yeah. That's the right one. Second month, January, February 9th. Yeah, I just went on the town website and they're not on there. No. 
write that down that I got them. Mr. Poole, are you able to put them up on the screen so that we can quickly see them? Because there's only a few <coughs> things there, and then we can carry on. the agenda it doesn't have the, the yeah, resolutions just, approved or not. Yeah, that, you're, you're just you're just looking at the uh, the agenda. It's under special meeting. Yeah. That's right what? Yeah. It's just, uh, it says February 9th special meeting, huh? Minutes. Yeah. Seven thirty PM. Do we have another one? Yeah, well, you're looking at the we're, agenda. We're looking, we're looking for, for the minutes the, of that meeting, uh, not the agenda. Use your access. Oh, thank you. yeah, sure. that be yes. I don't have them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to get these here. I'll just try this. Oh, there they are now. Are they there? Meeting minutes. Oh, yeah. yeah. I got them too. Ah, oh, there we go. Yeah. Squirrels. <coughs> Okay, it's <clears throat> pretty short, so let's get back to the agenda here. Okay, so going back to the resolution, uh, further discussion. Councilman Edward. Um, missing from the minute meetings, it's my understanding when a councillor abstains <coughs> that that reason should be printed into the meeting minutes. No. It's just a vote, and then if it's carried or not, yeah, and, right to and if it's a recorded vote, then it will list who voted in favor or opposed. But otherwise, any other time, if it's just a, a vote, an open vote, and there's no ask for a recorded or a third reading, then it just shows that it's carried. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Okay, going down here, 7, 7.1. <clears throat> Result of the Director of Public Works report be received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Morio, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? Councillor Medwood. Um, yes, there's some training mentioned in that. What is that training in reference to? Uh, so a new entrance training. That's a compliance officer who used to be Ken Kirkpatrick, but uh, we have a new compliance officer who will be Matt Linick, and uh, so he's going to take this new entrance training. So we <clears throat> submit our application. There's new regulations regarding the safety fitness certificate and uh, anyone that's applying for the first time or anyone that has a change in the compliance officer, they have to have the uh, new entrance training. So he's going to be taking that. So what exactly is the safety fitness certificate? Uh, so that's for commercial vehicles, vehicles larger than 45,000 kgs. And uh, so every year we do a safety fitness uh, certificate application and then we get that and uh, in it you list who your compliance officer is so uh, the safety officer is typically taking that role and making sure that we get safeties on all our vehicles so like those little blue stickers that you see on commercial vehicles that's part of it okay it's so a potential requirement because yeah. when i hear fitness i think physical fitness so that's what i'm motor, kind of motor vehicle wondering fitness. how this ties into public okay. work further discussion any questions all in favor it's carried 7.2, result of the January 2023 Swan River Handy Transit Ban Report be received. Moved by Councillor Medwood, 
Seconded by Councilor Powell. Discussion? Councilor Medwood? Um, at the time of this report, uh, it's for January, like January 1st to 31st? Uh, yes. Okay, so then it might not have kicked in, but I had asked previously if it's possible to record whether it's the client or the driver that is essentially cancelling the reason for the cancel cancellation of the service? Okay, I can, again, I, I think I owe you the Decembers as well, but uh, I can get you a small report on the on the reasoning. So we, we won't be able to go back. But and if we can't we'll go try. back, that's fine, because if people aren't recording that, then we obviously can't backtrack it, but if moving forward we can, just so we have that information for future. Thank you. Yeah. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 7.3, Council and Sales Report. I'll uh, start with Council Medwood. Um, okay, well, I've had a very busy week. Um, So February 8th was my first uh, meeting with Communities That Care, so they're looking to bring in some new programming. Uh, one of them was Caring Dads, so they'll be looking to facilitate some Train the Trainers. And I think the other one off the top of my head, I want to say Strengthening Families is the other program. So it's going to take place of that, I think it was Triple P or parenting program that they had previously offered. And they're also looking, because there is some new board members uh, in addition to myself, so they are looking to, Communities That Care is actually um, an organization of programming that stems from the state. So there's constitutions and everything that comes from there, but it also provides a support piece. So they're looking at having, uh, reaching out to have some training on the whole overall concept of what that communities that care does. So I'm looking forward to that because it'll give me a better understanding of what's all involved with that. Uh, February 9th was the Chamber AGM. We do have, at the time of that meeting, nine of the 12 board members elected. The new executive is Bill Gade for the president. I myself am the vice president. Uh, and we are working to get keys and access handed over from the resigning executive. And then we're going to be looking at scheduling a meeting for the new member base. Uh, the special meeting was that night. Um, I share many of the same concerns and questions that the public presented. So I still feel that there's just not enough, there's too many unknowns involving the arena uh, at this time. Uh, COPP meeting was on Thursday the 16th. I wasn't able to attend. We did have a good turnout. The group did discuss uh, promotional and recruiting opportunities, so getting in touch with some of the stores to set up some tables. I did train four members on Monday night, so we've got 40 members and we've got a few in the works uh, coming up once the paperwork comes through. Uh, today was my first meeting with service to seniors. They have a question they wanted me to bring forward. Who is, or who are, I don't know if it's one or more, the representatives for PMH for the Valley? PMH. What does that mean? Prairie Mountain <coughs> Health. Who's our representative with? I'm, do a, we board, I'm on the board of directors th there. That's, and I'm not. I don't just represent the valley. I represent PMH as a whole. The, the board of directors is not broken up into individual geographic areas. Okay. So the board represents PMH, like the geographic area as a whole, not individual geographic areas. Okay, but we do, have, so then you would be 
I guess local to us for a representative right. yeah, like in there. Myself, I'm from the here, Wade shot from Roblin. Um, there's a representative in Dauphin. Though that would be the three, or there's two in Roblin. Um, that would be more localized, I guess, is the word here. Okay, so then I can maybe pass your name on to them because there was a couple of questions or concerns they wanted to address with PMH with regards to uh, some of the programming they're running with the service for seniors. So I'll just let them know that they can maybe reach out to you and. Uh, yeah, they can do that and I will forward their question on to admin yeah. and then the appropriate people can uh, get in touch with them. Yeah, I think that's what they're looking for is just to know if we had local representation. So I said I'd bring it to the table because yeah. I had a feeling you held a position with yeah. them. Um, and other than that, I have been welcomed onto their board. So I have another um, group to get wrap my head around and be able to help. And this Saturday is my COPP regional board meeting, which is where um, one of the agenda topics is going to be the the whether or not COPP members fit in the spectrum of monitoring the security surveillance footage um, that we're looking to bring into play here in the valley. So I should have an update the, with the next council meeting. And yeah. Okay. Thank you. Councillor White. <clears throat> uh, I guess before we start, uh, it's been brought to my attention that uh, Councillor Medwood has been concerned about some of my comments. Uh, perhaps they were disrespectful, and I've apologized personally to Councillor Medwood about that, not meaning any disrespect ever, but obviously open for interpretation. So I apologize again publicly to you, Councillor Medwood, and, uh, and encourage you, if you sense that's happening, again, grab me in the hall and say, Councillor, we've got a problem there, let's talk about it. And that's, uh, that's the way I'd like to see those things solved. So thank you for bringing that to my attention. Uh, February the 8th, uh, Dr. Burnside, uh, Councillor uh, Powell, myself met uh, to uh, talk about recruit and retain ideas. Retain is slowly moving up in, into importance. There's three on the edge over there with three short relative to doctors. On February the 9th, uh, Councillor Morio, myself, and <laughs> Councillor Powell met with 10 resident doctors at the hospital. We handed out a survey to them. And the survey was really very revealing. I think that definitely we're on the right path. And uh, some of the things that really jumped out, a, a collaborative workplace, a clinic, was purely number one. The CT scan of work-life ba balancing, air service. And the thing that I missed is that what does your spouse slash partner do? And if we could identify that, if they shared that with us, then we could be more proactive into trying to find employment some sort of things for the spouse, whatever the appropriate word is to do. Uh, the ninth, we had the, uh, the boring bylaw. We're trying to start the process, no commitments to borrow anything, but a commitment to make the process available so we can talk about it. I am a good services on the 13. Uh, it appears that the Ukrainian fund, if that's the appropriate term, has run out. I said, let's send another letter to the board and we can talk about it. I'd encourage you, what did you spend that money on and where did it go? And, do you need any more? So I think they have 32 Ukrainian people in our community now, which is a pretty exciting. As much as I want them to stay, I hope they can go back home sooner. But uh, that's a conflict in myself. Uh, budget meeting on the 14th, again, trying to uh, manage uh, our boss's monies. And uh, the uh, Medical Professional Recruitment Services Board met following uh, that meeting with Reeve uh, Gade, Reeve Bierman, uh, Deputy Mayor Morio, and myself. Uh, Dr. Burnside and uh, Sharnay Betcher, who is a physician assistant. And as a, a, con a consequence of that meeting, we'll be looking at incentives, to who, uh, who are we missing or are we missing? We discussed those surveys. Uh, re retain ideas, uh, Dr. Burnside's main goal to be there was looking at retain. He's, uh, he's not sure where the status of all those doctors are over there. And he wanted to, we talked about the possibility of the likelihood of us traveling to the PAW for the UCN world and the nurse world, to Dauphin Brandon, and also going to the resident retreats where all the resident doctors in the province go to a community. And we had them in Swan River, I would say, eight, ten years ago. And uh, Sean O'Clock then again did an exemplary job. And what uh, Dr. Burnside had asked uh, some of us to do to tr track down the uh, the doctors in charge of the residency programs and encourage uh, maybe a few more residents coming out for, for stints 
in our community. And uh, he said he, one or two here and there would, would be something that he could work with. And if they trained here, would more likely to stay here. Uh, February the 16th, uh, his, his worship, uh, Deputy Mayor, myself and Staff Sergeant Duncan met to talk about crime. And again, that's a continuum. We're always working on it and getting some ideas. One of the suggestions, I've uh, co tried to contact the Staff Sergeant in uh, Camsack. He's not got back to me yet, but that's happening. And it appears we have a meeting in the near future with the Crown Attorney coming up, the Senior Crown from Dauphin. And probably here, I'm thinking, uh, Deputy Mayor. Think so. Hopefully here, which would be great. And then uh, our, our medical service committee locally met today. Uh, the Deputy Mayor Morio, myself, and Councillor Powell, and we, we were trying to decide action items and uh, a little follow up. Once you make that list, I'll send a copy to all of you so you know where we are. In brief point form. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Councillor Powell. Okay, um, so uh, my apologies, I was away last week for meetings and um, but, but the week before there, like Council White had said, we, we had met with Dr. Burnside and Dr. Webb and had an uh, amazing, amazing lunch with some great young um, you know, doctors to be basically and uh, we, we went with them and, and chatted with them and kind of just got to know what they're, what they're looking for exactly um, and hope to be able to uh, you know, work with them a little bit more in the next little while, as well, well as Dr. Burnside. Um, we, um, the library met the week before as well. Um, I'm now the new vice chair and have lots to learn in regarding the library and how things run there. Uh, Internet agencies met last week and I will be following up with them to see how things went and if there's anything else we can provide them. Okay, thank you. Councillor Bobbick. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, public hearing attended, lots of good questions there. Uh, also, Watershed had two meetings last week. Uh, we've done our interim uh, budget, which you will probably be receiving here. Uh, just to make note that uh, the Watershed will probably, there's a good possibility we will be buying a hydro seeder, which is a apparatus that can spray foam with grass seed in it and you can do banks so, and they'll also be offering that to their municipalities to rent if it's ever needed. Also attended the cow meeting, uh, wanted to make a compliment on whoever was running the loader and did Main Street did a really good job because I, I know how difficult that is but he did a really good job. Also just to mention if we could put it on the queue I'll come and talk to you about the back alley between 8th and 9th off of Main Street. Uh, it's pretty bad in there. We should be looking at something like that. other than that. Staying warm. Right. Councilor Boychuk. Um, I guess February 8th, uh, we had that meeting with uh, Municipality Swan Valley West. Went very well. Um, the, uh, we haven't really named it yet, but we're hoping maybe Swan Valley Legacy Committee. Uh, we had two meetings regarding fundraising. Uh, the committee is very positive, uh, community su support for the group. Uh, it is very, very much supportive to fund a new arena rather than retrofit this old one. Uh, so that is kind of in a holding pattern right now while we await information from JCC. Uh, tomorrow we have a Swan Valley Planning District meeting. And I don't know, and I don't believe we haven't confirmed on that budget uh, the funding for the uh, review of the planning districts. No, it hasn't been confirmed yet. We're waiting on um, the Thomas Bozeman's response. Right. <coughs> so I just know they might be asking that. We'll have to maybe see if that's a go here. I think it is, but. Um, and I'm trying to meet up with uh, Shayla and Nicolishin. We're doing a check presentation. Her and uh, the Bobbitt family have graciously donated the $600 to upgrade the uh, router to uh, get the live scan in at the arena. And uh, Craft Hockeyville, we are waiting the judging, which will be March 11th. We'll find out if we're at the top four and go from there. If we make top four, you're looking at $25,000 obviously can win it that's two hundred and fifty thousand dollars so um 
that's where that's at. I haven't had any correspondence with JCC or any updates in that regard. Do you have, that'll be like on the agenda as far as like, have we heard anything back with regard to the tenders? Uh, I did talk to them today and you know, they, they extended the tender till Wednesday without, we didn't know. So major issue. So that's extended to the? 23rd. We'll have a discussion about that in camera. That's it for me. Okay, thank you. Deputy Mayor Morial. Uh, a couple of meetings. Um, some of them were previously uh, mentioned already. Uh, the February 8th, we had the General Government and Finance Committee meet with Swan Valley West, uh, uh, where we had the initial discussions of uh, basically a joint um, agreement for fire services. Uh, there are a lot of things to flesh out with that, but uh, we didn't uh, uh, leave the table disappointed or angry at each other, so which is a, a major first step. So um, as council was briefed at the last uh, cow meeting, um, things are ongoing there. Uh, with that, uh, February 9th, uh, as Councilor White uh, presented, uh, uh, Councilor uh, Powell himself and myself met with the resident doctors at the hospital um, where we had a quick uh, brief uh, opportunity to expose them to the Swan Valley. Um, for that, unfortunately, most of them already have had their locations picked um, post their residency, but uh, there was a few there that uh, eyebrows were raised and haven't closed the door on the valley yet. So. There's a few things uh, transpiring potentially there. In the evening, our uh, public hearing regarding the arena, which was well attended, and people had their opportunity to express some views there. Uh, February 14th, we all attended uh, the budget presentation by our CFO Ganita uh, for that as the first draft. And the 15th, um, the medical uh, services recruitment uh, uh, team met uh, with our counterparts um, from the respective uh, municipalities, except uh, Minnetonas Bozeman was a, a no-show at the meeting, so uh, maybe if uh, we can have your worship poke um, their reeve to see if they have a representative forthcoming so that they're involved in the discussions and decision making of that committee uh, for it. Um, also investigating um, potential funds um, or a grant uh, for the fire department review uh, that was proposed where the, uh, we had that presentation come uh, through some reading of articles in the newspaper. Uh, I noticed that the, some other municipality uh, in the parkland received funds for a review of the fire department in their area. so. Uh, between Chief Rodorchuk and myself, we're looking to see if that fund is or grant is still open and able to accommodate that. So there might be some savings or potential uh, sources for that project down the road. And then finally, uh, lots of the communication between His Worship and myself almost daily for the last couple weeks on crime issues, health issues, everything else. So we're burning up the phone lines on communication so that when I'm not here or he's not here, someone's in the, at least the know that uh, one of us can step in quickly uh, as it has needed basis. And that's all for me. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Just a few notes out of that. Um, uh, there's been a lot going on and definitely thank the uh, medical recruitment team for <coughs> meeting the, uh, the young uh, students there. And, and hopefully we are successful in attracting any of them. And the fundraising team for Craft Hockeyville or whatever missions that they are moving towards, definitely thank them for all their efforts as well. And the General Government Committee also meeting with Swan Valley West and working out uh, these potential partnerships. Uh, yeah, the last few weeks for myself have been consumed by mainly crime items and not necessarily personally but um, just uh, 
you know, hearing lots uh, from uh, individuals in the community and uh, me reaching out to uh, Minister Vandell, uh, uh, he, who is a minister with the government of Canada and he, he's uh, an MP out of Winnipeg, uh, the Deputy Prime Minister's office. I had a chance to speak, speak with their office and, and there's a meeting uh, forthcoming. Uh, it might be the time when I'm away, but we'll have people that will be able to handle that meeting. And also with MP Mazer, who has stepped up and, and helped us uh, get this petition to, uh, together. And everybody will have a chance to see what that looks like. They'll be coming, one will be coming in the mail for you to fill out if you choose. And the other one will be circulated around town and the valley, I should say, not necessarily just the town. This is a valley thing too. And that will be coming around here in the next week. So be watching for that. Um, I spent a lot of time on the phone with the mayor from Thompson, or sorry, the Paw, um, uh, Mayor uh, Mur Murphy, and also from the mayor from Dauphin, uh, Mayor uh, Boziak. We spoke a lot about crime and uh, the similarities between our communities and, uh, and how we'll continue to work together in other ways or however ways that we can. Um, out of the G4, um, it was, we, we had uh, kind of brought RISE uh, back together again, so I believe that all the municipalities have their appointments made, so we're looking forward to getting that meeting underway. So uh, CFO Ganita, I will speak with, uh, uh, I believe it's uh, uh, Reed Mahalchuk tomorrow, but I believe that they have made their commitments already or their appointments, so I'll let you know that uh, tomorrow. And I think that was basically it for me. And just uh, for, for all, just a reminder to all the council members that are on committees that have budgets that you're working with, keep in mind that those budgets will end up coming here for us to review. Uh, so there'll be draft more or less what you'll pass or bring forward. And remember how much of an impact it will have on our own budgets as well. So you have to be mindful of what we're working on uh, with uh, their municipalities and those committees. So uh, you will be bringing those budgets after you have, uh, I guess, uh, some draft, docu draft budgets done. Uh, with those individual committees. Go ahead. A question relative. Thank you for all that work, by the way. You alluded to the petition. At one time, there was discussion about the possibility of some entity within our community going door to door with those petitions. Is that still going to happen? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. they they just got their the, the petitions. We just have received them, and so they're organizing, and those will be going around. But Perfect. We'll we'll talk about that. Great. And uh, yeah, outside of this. And that's it for me. Thank you. And uh, CAO Poole, you have a report there. I do. Thank you, Mayor Jacobson. Uh, <clears throat> the office staff is working on, on year end, our budget documents, and preparing the budget presentation for council, uh, expecting the Economic Development uh, Community Committee to, to give us something in writing by the end of the month, so next week. Uh, <clears throat> Working on our strategic plan uh, workbook. Hopefully, that will consume the council meeting in the short future. Uh, and have drafted a template letter to go to all the neighboring uh, municipalities for a letter, a letter to uh, Premier Stephenson regarding the crime. Uh, just to expect in the coming weeks, uh, I know we're going to discuss it in camera today, but some draft bylaws, uh, just some direction from council on what they want to see uh, as they do take a long time. Uh, we will need to, to deal, so expect a report dealing with the private use of public lands that has come back up. Uh, so I know council has not no idea what I'm talking about, but we'll have to give you the history and uh, a property has sold, triggering that agreement we almost signed, but uh, expect that report. Uh, the Community Safety Wellbeing Project is meeting this Thursday, uh, just an update with the provincial reps. And the EMO training for valley-wide councillors or newly elected officials will be scheduled after April 10th. So that notice has gone out to the neighboring CAOs uh, to see what dates are available for them and then we'll bring that back to our council and find a date. 
but right now it's after April 10th. Okay. And that's all. Thank Any you questions, Councilor White? Uh, two questions, you probably said it. Uh, that EMO training for new elected officials, can older elected officials take part in that? Incumbents will be invited to, yeah. And the date has not been chosen yet? After April 10th is where it is right now. Okay, that's why. Yeah. Now you alluded to a template letter to the Reeves that I think you might have said crime. Uh, is that the CT scanner? That's, that's the, the CT, CT scanner. scanner yeah. My fault. CT scanner. Okay, so that's a letter that we I got have all... that drafted, yeah. I just didn't write down. Okay, so that's crime. the one that's going to be with the CT scan where they'll all sign it. It's they the talked CT about scanner, that. yeah. I wrote down crime and I just I, said whatever. I, 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 <laughs> I want to make sure. So I was listening. Yeah. Thank you. That's an important letter, but it will sooner or later. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. So moving on, 8, 8.1. Where is the Swan River Fire Department <coughs> Pumper 1, a 1995 Spartan Metro, is currently outside the best practices and the age range recommended by recognized industry standards of the National Fire Protection Association, NFPA, in 1901, 1911, and 1912 Standard Annex D. And whereas the Fire Underwriters Survey, the entity responsible for insurance ratings, recommendation for apparatus end of service period as it relates to insurance rating purposes, the replacement of the apparatus to maintain equipment age requirements to maintain insurance standards. And whereas the current manufacturer time frame for fire trucks is between 12 to 18 months, therefore be it resolved that Dallas Swan River purchase a 2024 Acres Vortex Series Pumper Emergency Vehicle on a firefighter, oh sorry, a Freightliner M2-106 Series Chassis Fire Truck including required equipment along with optional equipment as per Schedule A from Acres Industry Incorporated for the amount of $807,778.18 plus applicable taxes. Moved by Deputy Mayor Morio, seconded by Councilor White. Discussion? Councilor Medwood? Um. If we're passing right now for the purchase, I'm assuming then with previous council, a bylaw was passed for the borrowing? The initial, uh, the first reading was done. Yeah, like this is for the actual purchase, like as in there's already been a borrowing bylaw done for? That'll be, we'll have the second and third reading on that tonight, but the initial, read, uh, the first reading on the borrowing was done last year okay that's all i was trying to does that answer your question yes okay and it also has received municipal board approval just that's like, right similar to what we did for the arena we did first reading it's gone to municipal board it's received uh, their approval now we're back to either proceed or not with the, the purchase and then if we do agree then we decide on continuing with the borrowing bylaw or not Okay. Okay. Further discussion? Go ahead. Um, yeah, so this is Council's uh, was fairly well briefed last week through the, the potential discussions that we've had with uh, uh, our neighbors regarding um, joint fire services with potential contributions to the truck. So um, this is the initial purchase price of the truck, but there's been a potential offer to help cost share the truck. Uh, for an unknown amount yet, which would uh, significantly reduce this price, um, which would be the Swan River would be responsible for. So, nothing's been written in stone yet, but that discussion's ongoing. So. Okay. Further discussion? Councilor Bobbin. So, it says we're replacing the 1995, which is Pumper 1. There's another fire truck there, which is what year? Uh, that was, uh, what, 2009? It was before me. Seven. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, maybe eight. I, I don't know. Somewhere in there. Yeah. So I guess my question is, to offer the 
residents of the town of Swan River fire protection, how many fire trucks do we actually need? I guess what I'm... I, I can answer that if you... Because it depends yeah. on the type of service that we're providing. Yeah. So yeah. go ahead. If we want to continue to... If the town of Swan River wants to provide the equivalent fire protection that we have now, like an off offensive attack, under NFPA standards, you're required to have two vehicles. Uh, one to actually fight the fire uh, as an offensive, but then a second one where you have to have, in case of backup, with, uh, uh, if you have problems with your first fire truck and firefighters inside the house have get into trouble, there's a, another separate water source that can be applied instantaneously uh, to get them out. So. So if we don't have two fire trucks, then that affects our insurance underwriters association, which would reduce our ranking, which people would see uh, a corresponding rate increase to their fire insurance. Okay, thanks for that. Explanation is very well done. Thanks. So, uh, just some of the concerns I have with this uh, purchase right now is one borrowing, or not borrowing. Pardon me. The, the only uh, we only have one bid on this. I, I really disturbs me that out of seven companies we only have one bid and I, I, I can't answer the question why that is but in the time frame of this purchase what what would another year do for the town fund besides upping the price of the fire truck we don't have the chief here to answer that question mm -hmm. are you able to answer that uh just with the information that he's already written down it it extends us from 1995, which would be, what are we, 23 years. It just takes us closer to uh, our, you know, possibly our, I guess, our insurance standards changing <clears throat> due to having that truck uh, on order. So instead of 18 months, it would be, it would be 30 months away. Okay, uh, just going down the page here, I received some documents are not really an answer to the the question of small municipalities for 20 years with an additional five years for second line or reserve. So somehow we have been classified as a city, small or medium city, which makes it 15 years or five years of backup and five years of reserve. So my question is, how do they classify us as a city? I believe that he explained that to us in a call meeting. Chief Fedorchuk that's responded via email to council to that question. I still really never got an answer. That just it goes to the it goes to the insurance factor, but not for the. There is no you have to in there. No, the only you have to is is that we have to educate the public. That's the minimum standard required in Manitoba for a fire fighting service. Is that we educate people, so we do not have to have a response. We do not have to have fire trucks. We do not have to have firemen. We, an education in the town page would be the minimum requirement acceptable by Manitoba. So don't get me wrong. I don't. I, I do believe we're on the right track here. That we do need a fire truck. Again, my biggest concern at this runtime is just the one bid. I don't think it's fair to the ratepayers of the town of Swan River that we take the one price. I don't know whether how we get the other prices, but out of seven companies that bid, I would only think it's fair to the ratepayers to offer them. Go ahead. Um, to counter that, I think uh, we followed the procurement policy, policy that was out there. Manufacturers had, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, CFO pool seven weeks at least to to pull the uh, the tender from Merck's and submit a proposal. Um, it's unfortunate that that's the only one we received. Um, there was another response that said, thanks, we got it, but we're unable to um, build. Pro build or provide a, a quote. So um, I think that just rules to the, uh, um, with the supply chain and just the, the, between the 12 to 18 months to build that. Uh, the there's only a, a set number of manufacturers out there and it's taken them up to two years to build a, a fire truck that's ordered today. So, so with this, uh, and again, I have nothing against buying a fire truck, just I have concerns the way it's going down here. 
uh, with uh, mutual aid and stuff, if this was put off for a year, would mutual aid cover the second truck? Actually, if we didn't, it couldn't make it out there somehow. Is that, or are we still in, have that in our firefighting capabilities? The, the second truck is going to stay in service until a replacement is delivered. That's fine. If it couldn't make it to a fire, is there mutual aid to cover its spot? We don't know that answer. At least I don't. We don't have fire chief here. Okay. Like there, under currently, the, there's other um, mutual aid would respond as it stands now, but there would be a delay into responding. So if you were, if it was a say, for example, a structure fire within the town of Swan River, and it required an offensive attack or interior search for trapped people, the fire department wouldn't be able potentially to do that um, without undue risk or against our um, operating guidelines until that second truck arrives, which potentially could be a half hour plus from the nearest uh, fire department. And I guess it goes back to that um, uh, the level of service that we're offering. That's correct. If the level of service changes, the the, the partners in a mutual aid agreement have to know. We have to. The, the agreement has to change because your assets must be listed, and the level of service you provide is clearly defined in a mutual aid agreement because that's the line of what is mutual aid eligible and what is not. So if that is changing, our partners must know. And the agreement may change, which typically takes months, years. <clears throat> so, so this borrowing is going to be put on by a special levy? Is that the way I understand it? Which I have uh, um, As is proposed currently, yes. Yeah. So that means all places will pay. All, all uh, property, that will be a special levy, so all properties um, will pay. Uh, I might have missed something, but is there a calculation on what that will be? We don't have, I don't know if we have that in front of us, but we can, uh, based on the current assessment, this borrowing probably won't be done until next year because we don't borrow the actual money until the truck is received and, 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 uh, and then go ahead and, and take out the loan, so to speak. But we could probably get Mr. Gadita to yeah. give you that information if you want it. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 10.1. Result of the accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General accounts checks number 29925 to number 29980 totaling $140,769.41 as listed on Schedule A. Payroll accounts checks number 5266 to number 5274, totaling $101,820.13 as listed on Schedule B. Direct deposits payments totaling $11,625.34 as listed on Schedule C. Moved by <coughs> Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Bobick. Discussion. Councilor Medwood. So I have a couple. Um, the line, and this is in the explanation for cert certain checks. Um, number 29931, CNH Industrial Capital Canada. I'm assuming that's a credit card, but it's 4,193.98 for machinery, tubes, oils, batteries, belts. Is this just to restock supplies on hand, or did something require service? That would have been service for one of our trucks. I can get you which one it was. Um, no, that's not actually necessary. I was just wondering, this is a one-time of, or is this something we kind of keep on hand for supplies? Uh, the garden securities for Veteran Hall Alarm Monitoring, 578.97. Um, 
I don't think they're a local company. Do we not have a local company? It's a local company that does some of our uh, buildings in town, and, and some of them are from out of town as well. Because my, my only thoughts with using an out of town alarm monitoring system, and maybe it doesn't make a difference, I don't have one, so I'm not really familiar, but considering our crime situation, what is response time? Same. It's the same? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, because our local one, the monitoring is subbed out to Winnipeg anyways. Okay. So it's, it's not him responding. Okay, that was just my kind of concern with with that and making sure we have Fair enough. adequate protection. And um, I am seeing some local shopping for sub general supplies, but I'm also seeing on here some Amazon Marketplace. Um, are all these literally not available locally? Hey, Brendan assured me that he looks locally, but if the, if the price difference is that much, he will he will select if it's uh, like a bulk purchase or something, but he will look locally for a specific item. Because yeah. um, I would like to see that procurement policy come on to the cow at some point so we can mm -hmm. discuss that further. Please and thank you. And I think that was my last one. Great. For the discussion, Councillor Bletcher. Just on the security thing, wouldn't it make sense to have everything under one place, like not piecemealing it out? Like, and could we not maybe get a better deal if we have everything under one roof? Yeah, Possibly. we are just waiting for one of our agreements to expire, and then we will take all facilities and tender them. Perfect. Any further? <clears throat> all in favor? It's carried. 11.1. Resulted by law 19 2022, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River to provide for the expenditure and borrowing of funds for the replacement of the Swan River Fire Department Pumper 1 with all the required equipment as a local improvement and be read a second time. Yes, I'm sorry, second time. Moved by. Councillor Bobick. Seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? Go ahead. Um, as previously uh, reiterated, this, uh, the borrowing bylaw would be adjusted once the final price of the truck would come into play. So if all discussions come into fruition and if we use what we have for reserves uh, or a portion thereof for it, um, the amount of borrowing would be significantly lower than the amount stated in the borrowing bylaw. That's the max amount of price, uh, but there is discussions and opportunity to just use other fund sources to reduce that significantly. Okay. For the discussion, Councilor Bob. Yeah, just to echo what uh, Deputy Mayor Mar Mario said that this is just a borrowing by to, to purchase a vehicle. It's not saying that we have to spend the whole work. Thing. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 11.2. Resolved that bylaw 19 2022, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River, to provide for the expenditure and borrowing of funds for the replacement of the Swan River Fire Department Pumper 1 with all the required equipment as a local improvement and be read a third time and be passed. Moved by. Deputy Mayor Morio, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? Go ahead. Uh, just happened to open up the municipal board report here, but to answer uh, Councillor Bobbick's um, question about the, the fees, uh, if the full expense amount or borrowed was asked, the 900000 uh, it would be 0 0.372 mills on taxable property. And the annual debenture would be eighty-six thousand eight fifty-four. Point three seven. So yeah, point three seven two mills. Okay, thank you. That may change too. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. the max amount. That's yes. the maximum. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Further discussion. 
Okay, this is a recorded vote. All in favor? It's carried. Resolve the pursuance of sections 152.3 of the Municipal Act Council Go to Committee and close the meeting to the public. Uh, we have bylaws here and we'll also discuss, uh, what was the other thing that I wanted to bring up? Um, what was it? No. Oh yes, Rena, yes, the uh, uh, Johnson Controls. Uh, moved by Councilor Medwood, second by Councilor White. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. We're in camera. Okay. Resolve this regular meeting of council now be adjourned at 9 19 p.m. Moved by Councilor White, seconded by Councilor Boychuk. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. We're adjourned. Thank you.